Hello world travelers! We had an amazing visit to the Hawaiian Islands in our last lesson, but it's time to move on. We only have two stops left on our world tour, so let's get going. We're heading east and south across the Pacific Ocean to learn about some of the string instruments of South America. So South America is a continent entirely in the Western Hemisphere and mostly in the Southern Hemisphere with just a little bit in the Northern Hemisphere. It's bordered on the west by the Pacific Ocean and on the north and the east by the Atlantic Ocean North America and the Caribbean Sea to the Northwest. It includes 12 sovereign states, Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Gu Guyana, Paraguay, Peru, Suriname, Uruguay, and Venezuela. There's one overseas department and region of France, French Guiana, and one British overseas territory, the Falkland Islands. South America is a vast continent with many music traditions, so there's no way we can cover everything in one lesson, of course. So let's focus on some of the most common string instruments. Well, the most well-known instrument of South America is the charango, which can be found in most countries along the Andes mountain range, including Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. You'll see on the map that the Andes mountain range is huge and that it runs almost the entire length of the continent's west coast. The charanga is typically made from a hollowed out piece of wood, but in Argentina, cowboys traditionally made it from the body of an armadillo, which was probably the most common indigenous material the cowboy had at hand. The roughly guitar-shaped body of the instrument is actually the hollowed out shell of the unfortunate mammal. Um, if that makes you a little squeamish, you can buy a modern charango, which is carved out of wood. Uh, they're strung in nylon with double courses tuned G, C, E, A, and E, and played with the fingers in a flamenco-like rasquero style. Let's watch Luciel Izumi from Bolivia perform on the charango. cool. The cuatro now is a national instrument of Venezuela. Um, and of course, it's so called because it has four strings, cuatro cuerdas. Other names are guitarra pequeña, which means small guitar, guitarrita, which means little guitar, and guitarrilla, which also means little guitar. There are similar instruments with five, cinco, and six, say, strings. And the cuatro is also used in part of Colombia. Um, in Venezuela, there's two different kinds of cuatro. Um, used and produced in different parts of the country. Uh, in Lara State, the Cuatro Larense, and in Sucre State, the Cuatro Cumanes. Um, the Cuatro Larense is a usually, usually a bit more expensive and used professionally. It does not have very much decoration. Um, often only the rosette around the sound hole is decorated. The Cuatro Cumanes has more marquetry decoration, like different colored pieces of woods, both on the front and the fingerboard to decorate the instrument. The Cuatro is made like a small guitar with a flat back. The top of the front, above the middle of the sound hole, is protected by a thin layer of darker wood. You'll see this pretty clearly in the beginning of the next video, featuring musician Carlos Capacho and his composition called The Global.
All right, let's check out an instrument in Brazil. In the province of Mato Grosso in southwest Brazil, there's a very instrument, uh, very interesting instrument called the viola de cocho. It's unique to that region and not found anywhere else in Brazil. And even though it has viola in the name, it's not related to the viola at all. It's part of the guitar family of instruments, and because Portuguese is common in Brazil, they call guitar viola like they do in Portugal. So there you go. The viola de cocho is carved from one single piece of lightweight wood. That's the body, the neck, and the tuning head, and then hollowed out. And then you put a thin piece of light wood uh, glued to the front. Um, a similar but darker wood is used for the small fingerboard and a veneer is glued onto the peg head, which bends it slightly backwards. Hmm. Interestingly, there are no sound holes hmm. on this instrument. That's pretty unique in my in my experience. Most instruments, string instruments, have sound holes to let the sound escape. This one, no sound hole. So it's, does it sound like this? It's got yeah, a it's a quieter a, sound quieter. for sure. It's it's. Um, it's just a very muted and sweet sounding instrument. Um, it's also left plain. There's no varnish on it at all, so it doesn't even look finished. Um, but it does have a warm, mellow sound that you'll see in the next video. There isn't much fancy work in the left hand because that neck is so short and there are only two or three frets on these instruments. But pay attention to what Daniel DiPaolo does with his right hand. Does some very fancy strumming. <laughs> Well, we hope you enjoyed your, your uh, whistle stop tour through South America. Um, it's time for the joke of the week. And this is a Mr. Strobel original, guys. Um, hey, feel free to send us your jokes. Maybe we could share your joke. Mr. Strobel came up with one this week. I bet you guys have some good ideas for some music jokes around our, around our fun and our learning. So feel free to let us know. Um, David Jones and Nick Strobel, you can find our emails through, through the school, of course. Feel free to let us know. Um, any yeah. questions and requests you have, we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, so here's the joke. What did the charango say to the guitar bully? Why don't you pick on someone your own size? That's good. <laughs> yeah. Har, har, har. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for listening. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye.